welcome back to another episode of Void City Customs. I am Dan, and today we are going to be looking at a Red Hood action figure that I made. This is a McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Custom Red Hood action figure. And this is made up from a couple different pieces from a couple different figures, and we will take a look at those. This is a 100% McFarlane figure, so this is all McFarlane parts, so... Technically, it is a McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figure. Either way, we will jump right in. This is the first of two Red Hoods that I have made, and I will get into the second one as well in another video. But today, we're going to be looking at this one. So let's jump right in. Let's place that right there so we can take a look. I have kind of a dynamic pose. thought it looked pretty cool like that on the shelf with the black and the red. And that was a kind of what I wanted to go for with this one. A little more of a stealthy, this black and red version of Red Hood. Have to have the red on there because he's Red Hood. But I also wanted him not to have like the brown jacket and big bright silver buckles and short sleeves and all that stuff. So that's kind of the direction we went. For a bit of a closer look, see some of the detail. He's got his black stealth suit. Now with the black legs with red accents on the boots, as well as red accents at the shoulders right there. The jacket is now black instead of brown. And he has polished metal black guns instead of the normal silver ones that he would have. He also has a red belt with red holsters. So these three guys right here are the three figures that went into making this figure overall. Other than a little bit of custom work we had to do to make them look a little bit different. So for starters, we've got Red Hood. This is your standard Red Hood action figure from McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse line, the original one that came out. I do have some different guns in his hands. These are the guns from V from McFarlane Toys Cyberpunk. I just thought these guns look really, really cool. So I have holstered his original pistols and I have him using those other two guns. I just think they look really nice. Now from him, what we used primarily was the torso, just the, the chest piece of the torso, the head and the jacket. We also ended up using his hands, which are basically his hands and then the cuff of that glove right there. That's all one piece. And that is it from Red Hood. That is all we used from him. Everything else went to other figures or other projects. I will say the legs on this figure, I've used them for a lot of different things. They are really good. He's got really cool feet too. So I've had good luck with those. The second figure we used was Nightwing from Death of a Family. So we used this creepy guy here. Now, we had this body lying around because, as you might remember, we used the hair previously on an earlier attempt at the new 52 Superman hair. Obviously, we've replaced it since then, but I still had this body lying around. So I decided... I will take his arms and I will take him from the waist down. So I use the, the waist and the legs with the red on there and the feet. Again, I apologize for the occasional focus issues. But I use those pieces for the rest of the body. So you can see the torso from Red Hood and the waist and the legs from Nightwing as well as the arms from Nightwing. And all I did was replace the hands and use the hands from the original Red Hood figure. Last but not least, I had this figure lying around. I've used pieces of this for another custom Batman figure that I will show in the future. I wanted to still have him with his holsters and his guns, but I wanted them to be red. And well, right here we've got Thomas Wayne and he's got a red belt with red holsters and he's got these straps that go around his legs. Now, the straps aren't attached to anything, they just go there, but when they lie down on the sides, they look really nice. And they are also barely stuck on there. So, after you just pull this figure apart, you can basically unglue the belt after you've boiled the figure for a little while. Don't actually boil your figure, just dip it in some water that was previously boiling and is now still very, very hot, but not on the fire anymore. 
I left mine in for about three minutes just because the glue was pretty strong around the belt and I really needed to pry it off there. I had to dip them in there a couple of times just to really get the water in to permeate where the glue was. Just around the belt here, it's not glued down by the holsters. That was easy to get off. Just be careful you don't rip it too much when it's very pliable. These straps can become very easy to rip, so just be careful with that. But I got the belt off, and then these straps around his legs down here, those came off really easy. There's barely any glue on those at all. I just basically slid them right off around the top of his legs after I took his legs off of the pelvis. So that was really easy. Those two pieces came off. From there, I just slid the straps right up onto Red Hood's legs, which was pretty easy to do. If you wanted, you could probably carve out the inside a little bit of those to make them a little more flush to his legs. I thought they were fine like that. That's good enough. They stand out and they give it a little more texture. And then the belt, I just rested right on the top of the torso piece. It's not glued on or anything at all. It just sits right there and the bottom of the jacket holds it right in place and it just works out really well. And he has the guns from that figure as well, from the Thomas Wayne figure. Last, in order to get his jacket to be black instead of brown, the jacket on this figure, once you pull his arms off, this piece just comes right off. It's really easy to remove from the figure, just is held on the torso basically by his arms. So once you take the arms off, you can just peel the jacket right off and it comes off really easily. And from there, I have this small stand and I just mounted it right on there. And I used this right here, this Duplicolor vinyl and fabric specialty coating. It's used for a flexible finish that you can use for like, you know, door panels or car seats even on your trim, on your on stuff like that. It was meant to be something that's vinyl and kind of flexible, just like these pieces are on these action figures, like the capes and the jackets a lot of time, belt pieces, the, the waist piece is often made out of that flexible material, so a lot of paints. The enamel paints will not adhere to that and they will not actually set. They will actually ruin the plastic and cause it to become tacky and that can kind of ruin your figures. And acrylic paints, they'll dry, but they will then crackle and peel off if you ever flex the piece. They won't hold that shape there or, or bend with it. This stuff is fantastic for that. It holds its shape. It adheres very well. I haven't had a problem with it. I've used black, I've used white, and I've used red. And all three I've had no problems with whatsoever. They've held, they've adhered, and they've stayed on there. And as you can see, it looks just fine. It's not brown anymore. I just put the jacket back on the torso and put the Nightwing arms on. And that basically completed him. So now you've got a custom red hood. It's kind of a little more stealth looking than the original. But they still both look really cool in my opinion. That's one of my favorite McFarlane figures so far. I was so sad when this one was very hard to find when it first came out, especially the single pack edition. Pretty much the only way to find it was in the double pack, if you could even find that ever. So I was really happy to get that one. And I managed to get a few of them and then just thought, hey, I've got all these pieces lying around. These can make for some really cool customs and I really like it. So thanks for joining me again today on the making of this custom Red Hood figure. I will be back again at some point soon with a different Red Hood figure that was in the background of one of my previous Superman videos. I believe it was New 52 Superman. I will be showing how I made that figure as well. I will also be showing a couple other figures. I've got a few still left to go over. I've got a custom Wonder Woman and another custom unmasked Batman of Bruce Wayne. So it kind of goes along with that Clark Kent I showed off earlier a little bit. And we will show you how to make that one. That one's actually really easy. It's kind of almost just more of a kit bash. Not too much you have to do in the way of customization. And it's, again, really easy. So that would be a shorter video, but really good results. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you will see over the next couple of days and weeks, Toast and I will be coming back with a lot more customization for you and a lot more toy reviews as well. Until next time, I am Dan, and for Void City Reviews and Void City Customs, we will see you next time.